Hello, audience. My name is Dalton Mortimer, and I am the Authenticator. And welcome back to A Mystic's Vlogs, a show where we take a relatively serious look at media with explicit, fantastical, or supernatural elements through a magical, mystical, mythological, folkloric, paranormal, or occultic lens. And this week's Legends of Tomorrow either really pissed me off, or it didn't give me much of anything. So this is going to be one of those awkward, probably short, but maybe wrong and lam rambling ones, depending on how angry I get at the stupidity of one John Constantine, and also the shapeshifter, though she's had centuries of angst to build this up on, so she's somewhat excused. But Johnny Mate, you went and you broke time. How do you feel? Probably the same way you felt when the whole after thing went down. Huh. Anyway, Legends of Tomorrow. In we go. Enjoy. We open, and I swear to God, it frustrates me how last week there was almost too much magic to cover, and this week there's hardly any. There's some shenanigans with the leprechaun manipulating gambling in people's favor, which falls kind of under the same heading as the fairy godmother in that I don't see why this creature has to be, like, taken to hell. I mean, captured, sure, maybe domesticated a little bit, sure, but not taken to hell. But anyway, so, the basic gist of the episode is Johnny and Shapeshifter Girl are playing Timeline Shuffle because they don't want to have to pay for the consequences of their actions. Johnny would really prefer that he not have sent his boy toy, who also happens to be the grandchild of Marie Laveau, to hell and bound his soul with Neron, which will become important later. And Charlie, the shapeshifter character, really would prefer to keep her shapeshifting shapeshifting. Thus, timeline shuffle. And it's an excuse for mostly just a bunch of absurd shit. Um, there's a timeline where Zari is turned into a cat by the fairy godmother because Johnny wasn't around to Johnny when she was fairy godmothering. And another where they successfully sever the connection with the fairy godmother, but she bonds with Heatwave. And basically, there's a little parody scene of Bright, which I I want that show. That, that, that show with Heatwave and a fairy godmother... Basically doing the whole bright thing. Yes, please. And it involved the legend being turned into puppets. <laughs> because that, that's funny. Although, I kind of would have preferred to see a storyline where he used, like, the diary of Brigid to do that, rather than the fairy godmother. That would have made Morton men a little bit more interesting. But anyway, yeah, timeline shuffle. After the leprechaun has been shot through the de uh, through the head by a bunch of dystopian versions of the Legends of Tomorrow, which I believe are called the uh, Overseers of Chronology or something like that. Basically, it's timeline shuffle wherein every successive timeline is increasingly dystopian until Johnny and Charlie finally get their selfish acts together and actually go back in time and solve the thing that Johnny broke when he broke up with Desmond before they were supposed to fall in love. Although I don't know why Johnny never thought to go back to the day he accidentally sold Desmond to Neron, because the timeline has been fairly clear that them falling in love is a crucial and important thing, and Marie Laveau was even more clear about it, but... Um, there's nothing saying that you had to not prevent yourself from going back and preventing him from being damned in the first place, therefore, thereby allowing Neuron to be easily dealt with because he's not, you know, wearing your bow as a suit. But, hey, maybe that's how they'll get out of this, huh? Maybe, maybe after the second half when Neuron is totally and completely insurmountable because he's fucking Neuron they'll go about making sure that Johnny's boy toy isn't basically sold to a demonic tailor and um, made into a suit. 
but I'm getting ahead of myself. Basically, yeah, that's how the episode ends. Neron is going to be wearing Desmond through the entire time, so Johnny can't hurt him. Also, I did enjoy the moment when the timeline was restored, basically by time-altering true love's kiss. This amused me greatly. But, um, that's neither here nor there either. And, yeah, other than other than the interpersonal stuff of Charlie learns her lesson and learns that she's the heart of the Legends, which was handled rather poorly because I don't think the Legends would have gone homicidal with magical creatures. I think in this case it's more Johnny not being there that was the contributing factor to that because if they couldn't find a magically oriented way of dealing with magical creatures, they probably would have used technology similar to the elemental pistol that Ray, did, Ray had to deal with the darks in the previous season, and adjusting their technology accordingly to that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that them going all homicidal and murderous on magical creatures in the final, most realistic dystopia has less to do with Charlie not being there as the center of, as the heart or center of their, like, emotional compass, but more to do with the fact that they don't have a on-call magician apart from Johnny. Although you would think that it, in at least one of those timelines they might have considered calling and dealing with Nora. Yes, no, yes, no. Like, we've seen that they're willing to do that in the regular timeline, so I can't imagine Ray's little crush would go away or be that particularly weird. Anyway, that's, that's about where the actual episode itself ends. Let's, uh, wrap up a little bit here. This was a short one. Damn. <laughs> I guess there are a few littler moments that we can talk about. I mean, there's a um, subplot of in the first dystopian timeline they visit, because timeline shuffle, Johnny is stuck in a, basically, the Time Bureau, but if the Time Bureau was a mental institution on the grounds that because he meddled with the timeline, he he is the last person to forget the original timeline, and therefore both timelines are existing simultaneously in his head. Which, given the consequences of your usual world-shaking stupidity, Johnny, you kind of lucked out with that one. And there is a somewhat accurate line of um, when they find that Zari has turned into a cat, Johnny, uh, of course, uncats her for a bit. And then says that a restitution to a cat is much easier than a um, catting in the first place. Because, yeah, he does end up re-catting her shortly thereafter. And it's funny because she is the one that's talking the sense and is like, we need to go and you guys need to fix the thing you broke. And they're like, but we don't want to fix the thing we broke. So cat again, because restoring you to a cat after you've been turned into a cat once is much easier than turning you into a cat in the first place. Yep, that makes sense. It did remind me, though, just how much I missed the magic exposition from the NBC series. That was one of the things I loved the most about the NBC series, and one of the things I hated about Johnny's first appearance on Arrow. Dur during that episode, there's this one scene where Oliver literally asked Johnny how magic works, and instead of going through the lengthy diatribe of explaining how like he would have on the NBC series and would have fit his character, he goes, it just kind of does, and then moves on. This annoyed me to no end. But that's something to be dealt with later when I eventually get around to doing more like retrospectives, so let's not dwell too much on that. And with that, let's bring this episode to its close, because we're just barely scraping the bottom of the ten minute mark. And that's about as short as I would ever allow one of these to be. So, um, yeah, this episode was really good character-wise, and was funny and everything, and it contained a lot less cringy sitcom humor than I was expecting, but... At the end of the day, it really does boil down to Zari is the only one in the room talking sense, and fuck the pair of you. I understand you have your personal reasons to not want to, you know, die and or damn your loved one to hell, but fuck off the pair of you. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye, 
and see you at the next Mystic Juncture. Cheers, everyone. I'll see you all next time.